Hey guys, uh, welcome to a new episode of New Reader, Old Reader. Um, as you know, it's me, Maddie, and our other new reader, Amanda, and our old reader, Omar. So, <laughs> how's everybody doing tonight? Same ring. Uh, the same ring. <laughs> good, how are you doing, Maddie? Yeah, how are you doing? doing good. I'm excited to talk about Daredevil, Guardian Devil, um, mm -hmm. my first Kevin Smith book. It's Me written too. by Kevin Smith, and the art is done by, I'm going to say it wrong again, Joe Quesada. Joe Quesada. Um, Quesada. Quesada. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was a graphic novel from 1998 to 1999. It's eight issues. Um, this is my first full Daredevil run I've read, which is easy to do, I guess, when it's eight issues. Um, <laughs> So yeah, and I've um, so basically in this story, right? A quick synopsis is that Daredevil's just been left high and dry by his girl Karen. She dumped him, and he's real sad about it. And so he's just trying to live his life when all of a sudden this girl shows up on his, uh, his doorstep with a baby, <laughs> and he's like, "All right." And he's been told by these two people um, that the baby is either the Antichrist, right? Yep. or a savior so he's trying to navigate that and what's going on and that is the very quick synopsis without giving too much away as you all know we will have spoilers as we talk about this well done so, well done uh by the way this is collected in the original oversized hardcover the second printing of the oversized hardcover which includes issue 12 the new omnibus called marvel knights omnibus I don't know why it's not called Marvel Knights Daredevil, which is what it should have been. That predates the Bendis stuff, so that's how it fits in. This is the relaunch of Volume 2 of Daredevil, um, like you said, in 1999. And then afterwards, David Mack wrote some issues, and then I can't remember the small run. And after that, it was uh, Brian Michael Bendis. And this is also collected in trade paperbacks and Marvel Premiere hardcovers. It's collected everywhere. So if you haven't had a chance to read this. I'm sure it's on Comixology, right, ladies? Yeah, it is. That's where I yeah. read it. Okay, so <laughs> it is everywhere. This is Daredevil. Guardian Devil. All right, who wants yeah. to lead the conversation? Maddie kind of gave us a quick synopsis. Um, uh, let, let's talk about each issue, because there were eight issues in this. So, mm -hmm. like you said, issue one was the revelation that Karen Page... Matt's on, off, on and off again, girlfriend, left, mm -hmm. went to California, and left him dry. And he's pretty upset about it, like going yes, through a breakup is. and beautiful, poetic dialogue, inner monologue of like, I still, you know, smell her. I could still taste her in the toothbrush that she left behind. Kind of creepy, but, you know, <laughs> everybody, when you're, you're not really thinking all 100% there when you go through a breakup. You know, yeah, you're sniffing well, hair brush and you're like, I miss what, that what smell. You when your girl leaves and you're like, you know, I have these in, it, like heightened senses, right? Yes. Everybody else, you know, they could wash their stuff and you're fine. You're just left with the sad memories. But for <laughs> Not Matthew Murdoch, he's like, well, I can, I've washed the sheets a million times and I'd still smell her. Great. Thanks. Thanks. So awesome. Here are some downside. from issue one. Um, by the way, it is Joe Quesada, but I can't say enough of how much Jimmy Palmionti compliments his art because that's an inker. Now, since then, they have broken up and are no longer working together. Very, Any very. reason why? I don't know. Maybe somebody oh, okay. will owned them. I don't want to say Amanda Connor, but something happened where uh -huh. they don't work together. Uh, well, Jimmy Palmionti has been at DC for over 10 years now, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, he works with his wife a lot, and that's, like I said, Amanda Connor. And Joe Quesada has been the editor-in-chief at Marvel or whatever, like, president. Yeah, he Over is, like, the Marvel president. Now. Yeah, so he's kind of important He's too busy to be drawing, but he still draws covers every once in a while. So, yes, Maddie said that there were two uh, sides to this story, which is, one, like, hey, the baby is the savior. Or, yes. hey, the baby is the Antichrist. And through this time, too... Matt Murdock is kind of going through some self-discovery because he's a Catholic at heart, right? Yes. But now he's having doubts about God because... A religious of, crisis. Yeah. <laughs> faith. Everybody goes through, right? Whether you're religious or not, everybody goes through these yes. things. So he's got this inner ter turmoil of like what 
you know, what is what is this? Is this real? So that's really cool. And then yeah, yeah. we get we get to issue two, which is right after Gwyneth, by the way. Her name is Gwyneth. Gwyneth. And, and what's interesting about that is Kevin Smith is really good friends with Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Or was and really good friends. Didn't Ben Affleck do an intro to the actual graphic novel at one point? Well that's he did he did the intro to the collecting edit collected the collected edition. editions. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right so with that amazing Daredevil movie oh, picture right there. Don't Man forget Affleck. to go see that. <laughs> I'm sure he regrets that. But anyway. Yeah, well, what can you um, do? He's overcome it. It's okay. He's been at the time, for Oscars. At the time, um, we seem to have lost Maddie. I, I mean, think we did too. Yeah. She hated Ben that. Affleck that much. <laughs> <She hated that. laughs> Maddie. <laughs> So at the time, uh, Ben Affleck was dating Gwyneth Paltrow, so maybe that's why the character's named Gwyneth, the little girl, that sh the teenager that shows up with the baby. That's a cool so, thing. And then we – it's really cool. Uh, there's lots of Easter eggs, which I can talk about later. But then it's really cool that he re reintroduces us to a little bit of Matt's past, the things that he has done, including – Black Widow. <laughs> right. Because they did have it for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. during Frank Miller's run – during Senti's run. I was so pissed that he was like, she showed up and he was like, hey, you can take care of this, right? Yeah, oh, whatever. What? Oh my what? gosh. Murdoch, screw is you. Murdoch is not a sexist, guys. Uh, not sexist. Well, he has a lot of problems with women, and, though. That is brought and, up many times. Well, and also, he wasn't thinking that. straight because he threw a baby from the top of a building. Well, remember, right? it's a hallucinogen, too. Oh, well, spoilers. Well, we were going to get to that, Amanda. I was <laughs> kidding, though. You're telling the end of the joke. I was Man, at that him. point, though, when he when he threw that baby off, I was like, I, was, I mean, I was livid re the first right? reason. Like, what is going on? And I imagine. It was, and it was a female like, baby. He must have been that? very upset. So I would have been like, what the hell is going on with Matt Murdock? This is not my daredevil. You know, all this. this like, it was weird. I was like, what? What? The yeah, hell? You, you having never read Daredevil, you're like, man, Daredevil comic books are horrible. He's throwing babies and banging <laughs> right and losing them with babies. He's such a bad character. Why do all these men look up to Daredevil? It's a yeah. good question. So, yeah, and then we have Foggy Nelson has a new client. Her name is Lydia, and he, she, he, at this time, he is dating uh, Liz Osborne. Which, which is, is Harry Osborne's ex-wife? Well, Harry, God, Marvel. Comics. Okay, just uh, explain it, because I'm Harry, trying to figure it out. During this time, Harry was dead, right? This is before <sighs> One More Day. I don't know. Comic book magic. Oh, it was before right. One More Day? So, that, so oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, one More Day gotcha. was like 2006, 2007. Ah, okay. okay. This is before Harry came back from the dead. His wife was, his ex-wife was dating um, Foggy. And at the time, they're also partners with his, uh, Foggy's mom. So that that's what's going on. Karen comes back, and she also has the revelation that she has contract. <laughs> this is AIDS, it, HIV yeah. positive, it's insane. Positive because oh, she went to the doctor because she got she used to be a junkie, right? If anybody read Born Again, um, and then even or she had a season three to watch, you know, to make porn, and then she did some. Uh, yeah, she was she was in the streets for a while, but. Anyway, she got AIDS and she came back to Matt. And Matt's like, damn, when it rains, of course. Thanks, God. So he takes her back in. And then um, gets his ass whooped and runs into his mom again. And this is where his problem with women began. Yep, all because of her. Maggie. He's abandoning him. Left him. So he's got these trust issues. And you know what? I've talked enough. Why don't you ladies take it from there? Who wants to go? Keep going with the story, and then we can talk about each thing. I'll well, find some pages to show. Yeah. Uh, beautifully drawn. This is one of my favorite panels when she smacks him out of it. <laughs> out yeah. of his yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> imagery. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll talk about that later, but you, you all go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so we're at Sister Maggie. Yeah. It's hard to, to do this without the book itself. I know. That's, that's what I'm trying to go home. Just so you know, a lot of times we don't have the physical copy, and so it's – it's hard to just like remember. So after this, he gets kidnapped again. Like or not kidnapped. I guess he does. He gets cornered yes. in the alley, right? Yeah, he and gets he kidnapped gets, in the alley. He finds himself in a white room where he can't hear or, or smell or anything. Yes. He knows he's in a room and he needs to find the door out. And he's been kidnapped by, basically by someone 
who later calls themselves his his guardian angel. And he says, "Listen, that yes. you know the guy told you the baby is the Antichrist. He's wrong. That's He's true. a savior, and you've got to <laughs> save him." And Matt Merck's like, "Whatever, okay." <laughs> like, <laughs> And basically, he tells it out of there. So now he's got the two Opposing versions sides. of the story. Yes. yes. And that guy's name is Baal. Ba- ba- I know it's a... Baal. Baal, right. Baal. Yeah. I know it's a uh, religious figure. Uh, yeah, so I figured. But, um, yeah. So then after that, um, what, he meets back up with Black Widow, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He meets back up. I'm trying to figure <laughs> Like, yeah, because this is, there's also a point where what Karen talks to old dude Maccabi, yeah, or McCabe, I'm trying to think. whatever. <laughs> yeah, Mac- it looks like Smith. Maccabee, but it's not Maccabee. Yeah, <laughs> Maccabee. I guess that's what I kept looking at. Right, it. The, old, um, the, old, the old man, it's like, hey, give me the baby and kill the baby, and all your problems will go away. So that's the solution, right? It's like, reason, kill yeah. the baby. and he starts to <laughs> this Matt during this time. He doesn't know, but it's revealed later that he was on some kind of hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs. Right, so pretty much he he starts believing these things. He's like everybody's turning against him. Oh my God, Karen! Like, you know, uh, Natasha wants the baby. I better kill her. Or Doctor Strange wants the baby. Yeah, and then that was so awesome. The first, this is what this is where I just I was like, man, Omar knew me. (laughs) Doctor Strange page. Where this amazing panel. I know, I know, uh, Joe Quesada's art's a little busy. I don't know. Are you all familiar with uh, Lucha, the artist, Spanish artist? That's who his art mm-hmm. always reminds me of. Well, he's not a comic book artist, but anyway. So his art tends to be a little busy, but I, I kind of love that stuff from time to time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he sees Doctor Strange, and he's like, Doctor Strange, look, check this out. Look, I got this baby. It could be the Antichrist. It could be the Savior. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Yes. And Doctor Strange is like, dude, you're tripping. And on top of that, you got some drugs in you. And <laughs> they're like, what? Yes. And he's like, how? What's going on? Then and then he calls- all the pieces of the puzzle start coming together. And of course he calls on Mephisto. Mephisto, yeah, which that's, yeah. he's the he's the problems in One More Day, right? He's the reason why. We, Amanda, we don't talk about One More Day. I know, there's I'm just rules. saying. There's, there's so much Spider-Man in this, I can't even this, stand it. <laughs> there's, so many, there's rules and guidelines of the show. Is we don't mention that. We don't talk about those words. There are other things we don't talk about. I'll share the list People with you. People are later. spoiling the ending in the chat, by the way. I just want to let you know. <laughs> One more day? No, Slim, Shady Slim's already got to the ending, which is what I want to talk about, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. So the whole, yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's one thing, right? The whole time he's like, it's got to be Fisk. No, no, it can't be Fisk. He's not, he wouldn't do this. He's already broken me. Because that's right. You know, they've had their yeah, years. They've had, they've had their, their years. Yeah. Um, he broke him in Born Again. I mean, yeah. he broke him, broke him. He's the one that blew up the apartment complex. He's the one that kind of turned Karen on him, betrayed. Like, it, it's born again. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. So and then we get Bullseye, right, coming after that? Well, what's cool is, yes, of course, we have to have all these kicks. This is Kevin Smith. He's going to throw in everything. Everything? Here. That's great. That's what I love about Kevin so Smith. So we get, we get the assassin Bullseye. He's hired by old dude, Maccabe, McCabe. Mm-hmm. McCabe, Maccabee. Mac- Maccabee, whatever. Name. Where's the cycle, Cleveland? He can correct me. Yeah, he always correct us, please. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then there's this fight. Very similar to Daredevil season three. I'm exactly. not gonna. Pull in, in, in case you haven't seen Daredevil season three, I'm gonna stop. We did. We I did haven't done spoil it for me. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, but if you have, you should check out our review. Yeah, um, we did review it. So there's this amazing fight in the church, and of course, you know, Maggie's taken down, and Bullseye shows up. So Bullseye shows up, and he's like, "Dude, give me the baby," and. Murdoch actually kind of gets his ass kicked because he's not all there, right? He's not all yeah. there. And Karen, you're like, oh, Karen, no. Why yeah, do you, you want to give her the – don't give him the baby, Karen. And she doesn't. She doesn't give him the baby. Psych. It was a doll. And then you And have, then she gets got. And then she – yep. She gets got. Right there. And I guess for people that were, like, reading this as it was going that were attached to Karen were probably really bummed out. Yeah, but I was not. So I was like, me neither. I had no. I was more invested in his relationship with Black Widow in this than I was. Uh, completely. I was like, Karen, yes. get off. Come yeah, on. Karen Blab, but Black you, Widow. Yeah, you women, you women are even, ruthless. Golly, we are ruthless. Listen, but even if Karen she liked left. Tony, and that was a whole another thing. But Maddie, she left and she came back. So it's about because she had AIDS. 
whoa, easy yeah. now. We don't know. <laughs> it's not like she came back. Even though Matt was him. like a total, <laughs> I mean, he was like, well, I'm going to go call it Black Widow right away. It's, yeah. I, I don't care. care. I was like, you know what? It. I'd have been Get calling yours. her too. Get yours. Yeah. Life is hard. Okay. Yeah. So Karen dies. Uh, I was moved by that because I thought it was beautiful. Uh, yeah. These two were like, whatever. No, I think it is. I just, as a, as a reader who hasn't read anything about her before this, we weren't invested in her. That's not enough issues for me to be like, oh, oh no. I you love know? this like, relationship. But, I, but yeah. he does such a good job, like, introducing the relationship, though, I thought, for new oh, readers. that long letter? You no, know, I agree. Right, yeah, especially, especially the letter at the end. I thought that was really good. I thought that tied a lot of things together. Even if you didn't know anything about Karen Page or had never seen the show, I think he did a really good job to show you, wow, yeah. these two were really tight at one time. And it was like a part of him that died when she died. You saw how miserable he was. He was like contemplating yeah. suicide. And as you know, that's not I'm, not... I'm not disagreeing with that okay. at all. Yeah. I, not... I can recognize and appreciate how important their romance is. I loved her letters. I loved her inner monologue. I'm glad you that we like the a character. lot of her. It just, and I'm glad that we got yeah. a lot of him. I just, it just, it just so happened I didn't connect. And I, and that's not coming from a like a flippant. I don't care because normally yeah. I cry at everything, and I didn't. <laughs> but I recognize, had I known more about her, this would have destroyed me. But I mean, like before this, if I'd read more about yeah, their if you'd whole seen the struggles existence. the two of them had gone through that are hinted at in the letters. Obviously, they can't write it all down. Yeah, that would be long and just terrible to write it all in the letter. But if we had seen more of that, their previous history together, I think it would have, yeah. Been okay. more affecting for both of us. So yeah, Karen dies, despite of how you felt about her. Um, and yeah, Matt goes through this like, holy shit, what am I gonna do? Like, so and then the belly of the beast. <laughs> well, right, but before that, he has this moment of like, she she's kind of his saving grace, right? Because mm-hmm. he's about to like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm done, I'm done. I like. By the way, if you anybody that has ever read born again will recognize this because born again started like a lot of the uh first pages with matt laying in bed and as, oh, okay and it goes through the progressive state of like depression it's one if you never read one born again it's it's oh i'd like to read beautiful. it that's yeah great. me too um frank miller so one of my favorite things this is a little easter egg this is the ns bar and who do we have here jesse my boy preacher right oh, this, oh i didn't ahead. notice that and they're, they're that's drinking. so cool Dylan beer because Steve Dylan drew. Oh, yeah. see all the Easter eggs that we didn't pick up on. That's cool. Well, I saw some Easter eggs I thought in the funeral, which we'll get to. Yes, yeah, I, yes, I saw those too. Did. But before that, there was also Easter eggs when, you know what? I will let you all take it from here because the revelation is one of, to me, is one of the coolest revelations for oh, a Daredevil yeah. book that I ever read. So. A complete 180 degree turn. I think I texted Omar as I read it. I said, What? I was not expecting this story Whoa. to go in this direction. I didn't even think there was any remote possibility that that character would be involved. So, no. you know, we, we're leading up. We you know we we just assume that it must be someone related to Daredevil's life, right? Because this you has know been so far, and so he thinks it's Fisk. It's not Fisk, but it, it, they keep talking about this like antithesis of his like nemesis and everything else. And I'm like, okay, I haven't read that much Daredevil, but I already have certain images of types of people it could be. Yeah. Right. So even if I don't know the whole story in his background, there's like a vision of the character that would be. But yes. then you see you see Makabe, whatever, and he's got like a green shirt on, he has his eye, and then his arms lifted up, and then you see him slowly put on the helmet, he's pulling off his face. Ugh, and it's yes. Mephisto. And I was like, What? That's crazy. Oh my god. I know. And it was a good it was a really good reveal. Like good job, Kevin Smith. And he goes through his whole thing, right? About like, hey, here's my backstory. Here's even my name. Like, yes, I don't only hear that in a show. He's like, well, here's my, this is my name. Here's my deal. Here's what I've been involved in, like with movies and everything else. And I tried to bring like movie effects to real world, and people just didn't appreciate it. And then like him wanting to fight his, he came out to fight his nemesis because he's dying. Mephisto's dying. He has a what a, a brain tumor, inoperable. Yeah. Well, not not Mephisto, Mysterio. 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 Sorry, yeah. Mephisto is the other guy. Yeah, Mephisto Mysterio, is the devil or whatever version of it. But no, My I just find Mysterio. Well, Sorry. I was excited because I've been dying. I've since he's the we as put we suppose he's the main villain in Far From Home coming out, and that's Jake Gyllenhaal's character. I was like, you've got to be kidding me! I'm gonna get to see some Mysterio finally. I was so pumped, and there was a clue, and I just and I kept thinking about it. 
when he was talking to Gabriel, Mr. Gabriel, who t- was the guy in the ball mat ball outfit, he said he's di- he's not the Arach- my arachnid nemesis. Sounds like Spider Man. Who the heck is this guy? I kept thinking it was Fisk because it had to be because he fought both of them before. He <laughs> right. was Spider Man villain originally, but for Mysterio and his excuse because. The whole Clone Wars, the whole Clone Saga with Ben Riley, and it's not the same Spider-Man, which I was just like, oh, clones. Yeah, so he okay. was just like, man, I gotta I got get another one. I guess I'm dying. I can't fulfill my wish. So, so I've got to go fight someone stringer. else. second stringer. Yeah, Daredevil. Yeah, second stringer. It's, this guy's like him. me. A yes. second string. And well, I appreciate it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to like. I love the fact that that's also the thing that Kingpin was because I mean the Kingpin started as a Spider-Man villain. Yes. And then later on, that's like that's one of the unrunning jokes. Like Daredevil can't even get his own villains. <laughs> his own original villain. Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> right? It wasn't until Frank Miller came on the book that you're like, holy shit, Bullseye is pretty badass. Yes. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want no, to throw that in there. Um, I was just saying I really appreciate that, and I thought to myself, this actually is a great villain for kevin smith who makes movies because he talks about you know the different directors and he talks about you know wanting to give it the special effects stuff to the people i just kept thinking about well this is what kevin smith does for a living if you will he's he is a director he's a writer for movies and i thought it was really cool that he used mysterio as his villain versus anyone else because he could have chose a ton of villains and that's who he chose and i thought that was really smart um this guy who is in the industry but hasn't had a lot of success and thinks all these other guys like Spielberg and Cameron are just not good, (laughs) which, you know, (laughs) is insane. So I just thought it was really awesome that he used Mysterio as the villain because of who he is. If it was anyone else, I guess it wouldn't wouldn't matter as much to me, but I thought it was really cool that Kevin Smith chose him as the villain for this whole story. Yeah, and so we get to the end of this, right, with Mysterio, and, you know, Mysterio's like, hey... You're not going to be able to hear the baby or find the baby. So you have to listen to my whole spiel. Yeah. Which, of course, so is self indulgent. (laughs) And then he he doesn't even fight him. Like, uh, Daredevil doesn't even have to fight him, right? He just just says a few words and breaks him completely. Yep. Which was, I thought was really, that was perfect and poetic. And I think after Daredevil working so hard to bring himself back to a place of confidence. Yes. um, In healing for him to to do something like that. and to recognize in that situation, like what the correct choice of actions, because he's also being, he's also just dealing with another broken man. This man's just yes. dying. He's dying. It's his last stitch effort, and he's like, you know, a man that weak. It's better yes, to exploit, exactly right. you know, his his failings and his emotional trauma than to physically attack him <laughs> so through the yes, flashback. Exactly right. Through the flashback, we get a few little little. Easter eggs here, like the Jay and Silent Bob mask. Oh, I didn't even recognize oh, that. Uh, there's a couple other things in here. I I pointed it out earlier, and I, I meant to make notes. It's yeah. just Quesada, like uh, oh, the named, artwork. And um, yeah, like Kevin Smith had just had a daughter. He named her Harley Quinn. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if you see at the end, well, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll let you all finish. This is the fight with the fight <laughs> as yeah. he does to just break his fishbowl. And like but, Maddie, see, Dare- we're saying. Yeah. but Daredevil is so smart because he let him do his rambling while he was listening to his suit to figure yep. out where the mechanisms were to shut the suit off, which I thought was genius. And I think my favorite line that he says right at the end, he goes, you're no kingpin. And I was yeah. like, yeah, you're not kingpin. Because- oh, you know what he was doing? Because that yeah. led to this, right? Because he knew. He's like, I can, I can hear his heartbeat. Yep. I know he's pointing the gun at me, but I know what he's going to do. Exactly, because he's seen mm-hmm. it before. It's not the first time. Ugh, it's so good. And, and Mysterio dies, killing himself. And yep. The, and the then, like, guess of- who we get in the next? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Should- the next we get the guy. We get the thing. <laughs> Peter Parker. The cameo by the thing. That's what. It yes, we get the thing. About. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm so excited so to see. Here, here's the thing. Kind of this is what Maddie wanted to go through. There's a few cameos, uh, most notably Joe Quesada up there with Jimmy Palmionti. That's awesome. um, I can't. Uh, there, there they are up here. They're in the <laughs> back. Um, yeah, we have characters from the Marvel universe. We have Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. You can tell with the pipe that he's wearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we have the Daredevil family all in the front, including like Daredevil's secretaries and paralegals. Yeah. Um, but this is Karen Page's 
funeral. And I think this is one of my favorite parts. Like when he's got these things he wants to say, like he, he doesn't know how to he's say. He's got it. all these things about her. He's like, how do how does one that is still you know going talk about somebody that that is no longer here? Like there's no void to fill that emptiness. Yeah. So all he all he's able to muster up is, um, I'll miss you. And I thought that was really sweet because there are no words. And yeah. then of course the letter. And I'll let you all talk mm-hmm. about that. I thought that was really beautiful. And finishes out the story quite well. Yeah. So yes, this letter that she wrote to him was while they were still together. And yes. I guess in preparation or response to her adding him as her to beneficiary. Her life insurance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like that she, I think she kind of probably predicted at that moment exactly what he would do with yeah. it. Because they talk about the, the apartment building, how it's gone and how he's kind of devastated about that. But there's, there's just no way. Yeah. And so, you know. She gave him the perfect gift he needed to kind of, I think, move on from her, move on in his life, which was the ability to rebuild that and start his new practice. Exactly. But it was really sweet. Oh, and man, it, I, we didn't talk about it. But the flashback real quick, sorry, where he she yeah. tells him to never stop. Like, even yes. if they have kids, to never yeah. stop. Never stop. Yeah. I thought that was awesome, too. That's what I meant by his saving grace, right? That's like, so sweet. Yeah. Because they're... Just I love the way, the way, that, the way she that she puts said it. it, I think. Yeah. yeah. The way that she puts Don't it. Quit. It's like, because she feels like it's a better world out there for people. It's, it makes it, people like him make it okay for her to step out every day and live her yeah. life. And mm-hmm. I thought that was wonderfully put. And um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll let you all keep talking about the ending. Yeah. So we have a funeral, beautiful words, and she leaves him insurance money. When she yeah, was she working does. for uh, Wilson Fisk. Yeah. Which, by the way, turns out, funny enough, he did have some things in here. But not – actually, I think – a lot. Can we talk about that? We got to talk about this wonderful conversation he has. With, with Spider-Man? Spider-Man? I think yeah. that's important, too. I agree. Because I think this is the part where he just learns to, like, I guess let go, in a way, mm-hmm. of the things. It's the way that he puts it. Yeah, and I like that imagery right there when Spider-Man's talking about Gwen Stacy, how he's oh, been through this before, right and you see that, yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah, of course. Um, that's Just, one of I mean, my favorite scenes. Every every Wrong. superhero has had somebody they know or love and just dying them yeah. just about, you know. Of course, we used to call them fridging. Or Yes. Yeah. It's not all women these days. Not Uncle all ben, women. Uncle Ben was fridged long before Alexa. Yeah. But even then, I mean, even with everything that Karen had said to him, it was what Peter said to him, like, that he saved that baby's life. Well, yeah, that was it. Like, you have this entire wonderful dialogue, which Kevin Smith is great at writing, right? And and, and it's not even even phasing Daredevil. He's like, what's the point, right? Yeah. I did all this, and Quentin Beck ended up killing himself. You know, like, what's the point? People are dead, yeah. And then he's like, you saved the baby, Matt. And that's it. (laughs) And then his face is like... (laughs) Oh, damn. Okay, I guess yep. that was the point. She yep. can't save everybody. But and then he has that boy. wonderful scene with with Natasha what, what about I, him and women. <laughs> right. Yes. Just talking about how he just has a lot of issues with women and he needs to figure it out, but maybe not get a new relationship until he figures it out. <laughs> which, which is, is smart. Wise, which is smart. Which is good, you know. That's, yes. That's- some good advice coming from one of his oldest friends, ex lovers. Lovers, yeah. This is the wall I was talking about. So when they're talking about rebuilding, yes, um, Murdoch Fisk blew it up, which right, obviously that was we never see. Yeah. That and born that's again. right. There's all the little Easter eggs in here, like Jay and Silent Bob, people that work at a shop, uh, the Harley Quinn when she, yeah. So oh, during, I see that. Yeah. So during this, when he was doing this, he was also working on Dogma. And that's like one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. Yeah, I love that. No, nothing beats Mall Rats. That's still my favorite. <laughs> and I know my boy Philip Evans knows our favorite quote from Mall Rats is Philip, go ahead and type it out because we talk about it all Phillip, the time. Wait. And uh, yeah, then we have uh, Daredevil going back where it all started to uh, confession, confessing his yes. sins. But this time he gets interrupted because he hears the heartbeat of a baby trapped in a fire. And a fire. And he's like, I'm out. He said, 
I'm going yeah. to do my father's work. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a way to finish it. What a way. That was a great well, way to finish it. Because he says, no rest for the wicked. Oh, it was awesome. But I, I laughed out loud because the guy's like, where'd you go? Like, he jumps. He opens that confession window. He's like, what? What happened? <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, a little bit of humor no, right there at the no, end. No, I appreciate no, that. It, Doug. <laughs> it's just because a guy reads comics doesn't mean he can't start some shit. That's the best line in Mall Rats. <laughs> and that's that's my buddy. That's my boy. Oh my god, I love Mall Rats. Uh, I miss those days of Kevin Smith. I have no idea what the man I think the man is doing like uh He does a lot of flash Arrow, episodes now. Flash episode. so. Yeah, he was on a um did a cameo, I think, in Flash. I guess it was yeah. Flash. And then he does well, his he, own podcast and you Yeah, well he had that heart really attack, cool. so he had to, you know, kind of take it easy for a while and he yeah. you know, lost a lot of weight and stuff so that probably played a big part in not doing as much anymore but the episodes he's directed to Flash are amazing so they're good episodes kids on the escalator again yes oh my god I quote that movie all the time <laughs> um, so yeah in issue one in the half issue you find out exactly how, what the Kingpin told uh, Mysterio for a million dollars pretty much it's just a quick synopsis of um, Daredevil stories Mm -hmm. I love, I love that he, yeah, man, like he was able to do a fresh story for new readers to be introduced to the world of Daredevil. Yes, and then make us old readers go, "Oh my God, he's talking about Typhoid Mary, the time they used to have sex," because that was a weird story. <laughs> That's yeah. When I saw that, I was like, "Oh, I didn't know that happened." But yeah, there's all these little things that he threw in here for us old readers that to appreciate. It, yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, and I love that it didn't, you know, it didn't have the stereotypical kingpin story, even though he was kind of. Helping the mastermind behind all of this, but not really. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. This uh, whoever suggested this, I can't remember who it was. Uh, I thank you. Either. Yeah, because it was a really good read. I enjoyed it a lot. I especially the twist. I miss Kevin Smith writing good comic books. I miss that. Oh my god, it's Kevin Smith. Oh my god, he's writing Daredevil. Like I miss that feeling of like, this is long before. He did those Batman stories um, that yeah. are notorious for being kind of awful. But his run on this was great. His run on Green Arrow was phenomenal. Uh, the very first Batman, uh, was it Cacophony, I think? One of the miniseries I really liked. The other ones were just kind of trash. Um, his Bullseye, well, that never finished. His Black Cat story was okay. But these things, yeah, this, this is where Kevin Smith really shined. Uh, or sh like, I thought he was... I kind of wish he had stopped doing movies just to become a comic book writer in the same way that Joss Whedon should have stopped doing things. Because if Firefly didn't work out, he could always come back to X-Men. That's the way I felt about Kevin Smith. I wish really? he would come back and do some uh, Daredevil. Oh, oh damn it. Well. Michael Cleveland, that's the fucking movie. Tusk. Tusk and then the, the sequel to that with the two girls, the Yoga Ho Hoga... Oh, sure. Yoga hosiers. Wait. Yeah. Yoga hosiers oh, well. users. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I can't pronounce that. Whatever. With his daughter Harley Quinn and Johnny Depp's daughter. Have fun, Kevin Smith. I miss old fat fun Kevin Smith. Oh gosh. That's I I, I miss that guy. Um, but yeah. it's weird. I mean, like it, it's not the same guy, right? Like he he, he, not the same guy that wrote Mall Rats. Not the same guy that was writing comic books and and, and making movies at the same time. So. Anyway, so for me, this was a nine out of ten. I loved it. Loved yeah, it. would have been perfect. Uh, but Casada's art sometimes, especially with like it's the a little movie. weird, right? Yeah, some some of the panels are wonderful. Like I said, I think sometimes when he's rushed, some of them feel like they were rushed. Yeah, some of the what some of the drawings of the characters to me at times they were great, and other times I was like, yeah, ah, I don't know. Times, at times, Black Widow is super, super smoking hot. And then other, and then times, other times, she looks well, like a Well, the same with lady. Karen's, too, and the eyes. Yeah. Sometimes it was a little yeah. off-putting for me. Yeah. Yeah, so 9 out of 10 for me. What about you, ladies? What, what would you give it? I think I'd give it a 9 out of 10 as well. Maddie? Yeah, same for me. Yeah. Wow, across the board. I think that's the first time we've agreed on anything. I think yeah. we have. <laughs> Look at that. It, that's was, a a great, it was a great, solid story. Um, <laughs> yes. It, I mean, 9 out of me a 10, but I, I really liked it. It, yeah, me too. And all it made me excited for was just, I just want to see all my New York superheroes in a movie together. That's all I want. <laughs> so if that's only. only. If only. Um, 
Did anybody like Smith's Batman? I found it quite horrible. I like the first one, the uh, which is kind of is I think it's cacophony, isn't it? The, the first one where it's the villain uh, Onomatopoeia, the villain from his uh, Green Arrow run shows up. I thought that one was okay. The rest of them I couldn't even finish. I I, I couldn't finish. Hmm. Uh, sadly. Let's see. <laughs> My boy Philip is still quoting Mall Rats. Awesome. Okay. Say, would you like <laughs> chocolate covered pretzel? It's because he is the greatest character of the uh uh what BOSQ universe, I guess. Uh yeah, Bam. Yeah, I I definitely think we need to at some point read his Green Arrow. I would really like to. It's been on my yes. list because I yes. love reading Green Arrow. Well, I think his already. Green Arrow is a great jumping on point because he literally, much like Green Lantern, comes back from the dead. He's been dead for about seven years. Gotta love it. It's a good and, way to come um, back. Start fresh. And what's his name? Had taken over the mantle. Uh, Connor Hawk had taken over the mantle of Green Arrow for years. Written by Chuck Dixon. Don't get me wrong. There's still wonderful stories. But Ollie started the, like... Uh, Actually, it all kind of ties into um, Infinite Crisis, which is our big readathon thing we're going to do in December. So, Superman was kind of like the very first person that came back from the dead, and it kind and they kind of write it into Infinite Crisis, even though Infinite Crisis took takes place a lot of years later, like ten or eleven years later. They're like, this shouldn't have happened. You did something that you know caused this butterfly effect if you will, where other heroes are now coming back from the dead. You started this, and it needs to be fixed. That's kind of like some of the uh, some of the things written into Infinite Crisis, which is which makes it a really cool story that they add all these things from the past. Um, so, let's see. 9 out of 10. I'm glad. So, are you all, would you all be interested in reading more Daredevil later Definitely. on down the road? Yeah, I would be. Mm-hmm. I mean, because there's still there's there's a lot better story, not better, but um, at least to me, I think there were better stories out there. But this one's up there for me. I love this story, and the omnibus just came out, so it's kind of why. Yeah. Best graphic. Novel. What would be the <laughs> best graphic novel you ever read? Oh my god! Gosh, that's hard to say. Uh, I couldn't even do a top 20 without like going over it, and I'm like, I remember doing my top 20 graphic novels like non-superhero graphic novels um and i kept editing i'm like oh shit i really want god country in there but then if i put god country in there i gotta take out uh day tripper and i can't do that like it was a pain in the ass to put together so to, yeah i can't do i can't do lists like that it's impossible it's, and also uh, i feel like it you, changes so much well then it changes so much because the you read stuff so much. comes yeah. yeah i mean once once you read comics for such a long time though just like movies right it's hard to break your ten, top ten. Uh, movies. It's seen so, so difficult. Like you can, like it's hard to break into that. Yeah, there, a movie has to be. Actually, I've had my top ten favorite movies of all time since I was a kid. So the last time something like broke the list was I think when Lord of the Rings came out, and I'm like, okay, this has to be in my top ten. But for comics, yeah, once you read so much of it, you're like, okay, this is the list. And then you're like, but where does it belong, right? Like, in which order? If it, I'm only picking 20, some of these wonderful books are having to be left off. Yeah. It's that Desert Island question when they're like, if you could only have three movies. Nope, I can't. <laughs> it's really hard for me. Hey, sweet extra yeah, thank you for joining. Um, so, do I like SpongeBob? Funny enough, I had a conversation about SpongeBob th this mm. Mm, today with my kids and, or What'd my daughter to have them? lunch with them. We're talking about anime and one of the little girls said, yeah, like Spongebob. And I was like, I'm not going to be one <laughs> of those asshole you. parents that's like, actually. But my daughter was. She was like, that's not an anime. Good for her. <laughs> my girl. Uh, Omar and gang, I'm not sure if you guys decided what indie comics you're going to read next. Have you right. read Sabrina yet? These two ladies have read Sabrina. Wait, yes, the wait here's the thing. About the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? Or the other Sabrina, because there's a Sabrina yes. that got a lot of hype that's a murder mystery. Yeah, I think um, that's on comicsology. Reviews on that. So I haven't read it because the only person I've talked to that has didn't like it. Oh boy. Really? 
So, okay. um, well, I, I don't, don't know. know. I haven't read any Sabrina except when I was a kid and I read those Archie comics. So Yeah, I, mean, I read a lot of those when I was a kid, too. Oh, but, Sweet yeah. Actress says I am watching Titans. Oh, I'm curious. I what, think it's just okay, Maddie, but yes, my oh, yes. girl is going to be in the show. Donna Troy. This week or next week, so I will. I bet you, wait, how, Sweet Actress, how do you feel about Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> the actress who plays Rachel. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I'm just curious. Level, well, but he asked the question. Yeah. And so I want to know. Now, Sweet Exorcist could be a lady, Amanda. This is not a sexist show. You leave that oh, to yeah, me. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm the sexist part of the show. Okay. You two are better than that. I I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see what the what this um this week's episode looks like with they're all trapped in like some sort of a I don't know, prison if you will, is the preview I saw in DC universe. Um, they're injecting Robin with something, and uh, Starfire's being kind of experimented on. So I'll, I'm interested to see what they're doing with that episode. All I right, know, I'm mixed I on think it we, right I now. Think we decided we were all going to watch it and do a, re- a final review. I agree of all with that. Episodes. I would all okay. older too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Battle Angel Alita review. We need this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Especially, but we do it before the movie comes out. We read the first volume. Yeah, which like, luckily it's now it. February, right? Yeah, because that, Day? that's one of my. I actually it comes out Valentine's Day. That's when it does. <laughs> yes. So we'll just watch. We'll make that that's one of our romantic movie. Romantic reads. Of February. Oh, good. I'm glad Sweet Exorcist says that Starfire is the standout that's, of the show. That's Omar's favorite. I agree. I yeah. agree. She was my favorite part of the show in episodes one because she didn't show up in two, and I haven't seen. No, I did see three. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's still. I would say she's still <laughs> the best part. Everything else, uh, I don't know about that show, guys, but. Yeah, I'm still on the fence. DC Universe app. So hey, but in the last episode when Robin finally wore the costume and started beating those guys up and all the rest of them were like, what? I was, I like that. I was okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of got uh, me a little excited. The Clark, the Clark Nato is asking me, no, that's an Amanda question. That is my, that's my damn question. Well, I, think I don't, that, know I don't, yeah, I don't know. care for the song and <laughs> I didn't know they were together until they got engaged and I I think yeah. that was the weird pairing in general. I think he was just her rebound guy after that other Mac Miller passed away. So, uh, okay. <laughs> <There> you- <laughs> <laughs> this is what normal people feel like when I talk about comic books. Yeah, no idea what the hell Amanda's talking about. <laughs> I can these people are real. Okay, I keep uh, up on everything if I can. The Uniques family. Who's, is it the nuclear family that showed up in episode three? Yes, nuclear family. family. That's who it is. The nuclear family. Yeah. I like those characters. I thought they and were pretty. And it's Melting Man, guys. It's the. It's what Melting Man. It's not Two Face. Totally spoiling things. I don't know well, what you're talking about. It's on their Instagram page. Oh, you're, not, and oh, you're you, not talking about Pete Davidson and Ar- no, Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like? Uh, uh, what is it called? The Doom Patrol episode? Oh, when, yeah. When, when, what episode was that? Three or four? That was the best one, honestly. Four? I think, they, yeah, that's, it was They had good. to bring it in so early so they could be like, hey, guys, don't worry. We have a good show. <laughs> We're gonna this have... one's going to be good. Yeah. Please stay with us. Please don't quit the app. Exactly. Please. And I, I'm still trying to figure out, and I was telling Omar this earlier, I don't know how DC Universe, how DC's doing it, and it must be Warner Brothers money, because if it's only available in the U.S., right, the app, and not everyone's yeah. downloaded it and paying monthly or yearly from what I've gathered. Who's where's the money gonna keep coming <laughs> the from? App is, the app is also garbage, okay? Like Yeah, it's not a great app. I agree. It, it, I have to keep hitting Apple. it over and over and over again to get it connected to my TV. Mm-hmm. And so we have to put it on the laptop case it's HDMI, like I'm in the nineties. Yes. It's not <laughs> it's, we didn't have HDMI in the nineties. Yeah. Okay? I know. I'm, we didn't I'm, have exa- I'm exaggerating to talk about how bad my first world problem is of not being able just to it is. connect my app to US my US problems, be- yeah, because, yeah, and I just, yeah. I don't understand like it. Everybody I'm, that's watching from overseas are like, these assholes are talking about the yeah, app that we don't even have. It's exactly. not that great. First world US problems. I just, I don't know how they're going to sustain all that. Cre- I mean, I don't know what how much money Warner Brothers is funneling into this, but I just, I don't understand how it's going to work. I don't know. Maybe, um. Missing we'll a source of revenue. Um, yeah, Clark Nato, I didn't like Man of Woods, Man of the Woods as much as 2020. <laughs> it's a shame. I, I, oh he, 
he misled all of us thinking it was going to be a country album, and it was not. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, agree. All, all of us were fooled. <laughs> Thank all you, Hark Data, for, for asking us about our pop culture knowledge. Yes, we appreciate that. I like that. to pretend that that album didn't come out, and I just keep listening to 2020. Yes. Now, to be fair, I, like I saw a live in concert, come out. and it's still amazing. Even if the songs are so-so, it doesn't matter, because seeing them live is where it's at anyway. Okay. Yes, they. It is. Yeah, you're right, Clark Nato. They did license it out to Netflix for foreign market release. Uh, we talked about that in our review of the app, but um, yeah, unfortunately, the app just isn't available. It just kind of sucks for anyone outside the U.S. If they want the app, because me and Maddie aren't really fans of the way it works anyway. So I would rather have it on Netflix. But yes, thank you. Okay, why? Why just not partner with them? Because people like money. Ah, uh, it's true. I mean, they know fans will pay for that Young Justice season well, three alone. Disney Plus comes out. Oh, that's out. true. What if Matt Reeves is not in it though? What if he's not in Young Justice season three? I may have some bad news for you, Maddie. Mm. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> we don't, we'll be. It's, I'm just interested to see what they're going to do with the Young Justice storyline. I like it so. Well, they're calling yeah. it Outsiders, but they don't have any of my favorite Outsiders in it. So I'm a little yeah, like some of the original Outsiders. I don't care about them. I want. My you want the fake Judd Winnick outside? Shut <laughs> up! How dare you? Listen, hey, I like listen, that too, but you look know, look at this beautiful crew. They're best friends and they're a family. Okay, you gotta, you gotta listen, call it what it is, though, because they're great. I like it I too. Don't I don't care about their other outsiders' garbage. Wow, I only, I'm only gonna read this one. <laughs> other outsiders' garbage. Watchmen is almost unreadable. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm gonna make T-shirts for you. You can get a bunch of hate at cons. <laughs> no, I guess it's unreadable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Quit it. Um, what's on for next week? What are we What are we reading next week? What, who is it up? Kingdom Come right or is it Klaus? Which one is next week? I think we decided Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come for November twenty seven. Yeah. yeah, that's November twenty seven. Yes, I just want to make sure I got my calendars right. And December fourth, we're going to read Klaus, and then the rest of December, we're going to start on our. Infinite Crisis, read no? us what? We, right? I thought that's no. what we got it. Yes, ultimate, yes. I thought we are doing Ultimate um, oh, Spider-Man yeah. for the 11th, that week of the 11th, because of Into the Spider-Man. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. It's not, I don't watch our shows, so yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember what we said. Uh, yes, so next week is Kingdom Come. So yes. that's four wonderful issues by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. Uh, that is the 27th. On the 4th, we're going to kick off the December with Klaus, the Grant Morrison. I'm excited for that one. It's not Santa Klaus, but oh. Klaus. And the 11th, but I think we're going to probably air that episode on the 12th. Yeah. Because, um, Amanda's got something. <sighs> if Maddie a work is event in the up. evening. We're all going to get drunk. A bunch of hotel sales managers and association directors. So, a good job. yeah, I know. I was like, oh, I forgot that's when that is. And then we do a Secret <laughs> Santa the next morning, and then we leave the hotel, and then yeah. Okay, know, we well, know. we can talk about that the closer we get to that. Uh, to that. And so, if we do that on the week of the eleventh, um, Spider Man, then that gives us two weeks to do. Cr- Infinite Crisis. So that might be uh, not enough time because we need to kick it off with Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm-hmm. And I think by the time you're done with Crisis on Infinite Earths, you might have a headache. because well, Not because you're I, dumb I girls like- or anything, because it is kind of a confusing storyline to anybody that isn't... I know you two are familiar with the characters. Yeah. It's just a lot thrown at you. Well, what I was thinking is that we could do one part of Infinite Crisis a month, right? Yeah, I guess that's we're that's done with it. I think I like that idea, yeah. So there's no, there's less chance for burnout. And we yes, take our we're time get tired of it. it. Okay. Uh, Dave K. Omar, seen an evening with Kevin Smith. I have actually. I attended a couple of them. Uh, he was, he was in Chicago. I saw that. That was rough. Oh my God! When, when that was right after Dogma. Jesus. And then he did one in Lexington, Kentucky. That was in 2002, and the guy's amazing because he talks and talks and talks, and he loves telling stories. So it's like a Q&A, right? That's the way – I don't know if you all are familiar with the way he does his things. It's a Q&A, and people ask him things, but he loves talking so much 
literally one of them was only two people got to ask their question huh. because it went from one question to like that reminds me of this story and he has so many stories he mm-hmm. loves to tell just even before he went hollywood about his personal life when he was younger it's really cool and you just sit there and listen and like you're one of his friends um okay they're talking about Robin Hood. Is that the Robin Hood that it got? That he, I, the review I I saw was not a good one. That's why I was interested if anyone. They said Jamie Fox was like the bright light of it, but Jamie Fox was the bright light of it, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I saw Overlord, and I was not happy with that. Oh, really? Which is sad because I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, you like, really were looking forward to it. And the reviews it, for that were bad too. It was like one of um you know, it's, I like the premise a lot. The infiltration of Nazi experiments and zombies. It's what could shame. possibly go wrong? Oh dialogue. <laughs> what I, forgot could possibly go? <laughs> I forgot that's important in movies. Dialogue. Thanks, sweet exorcist. Yes, everyone don't forget to hit that a uh, like button on our podcast or on our live show please and thank you sweetest actresses for telling me all about grace Choi. you're making her so excited right now <laughs> black lightning i already love black lightning it's, it's my favorite dc cw show um it's the one still. i have to catch up on now um even though i love all the rest i i'm i'm, I do. I'm huge in all the shows but i love black lightning and grace Choi is in it who is an amazon and she's an outsiders and we've That's yet right. to see her be her Lightning. Amazon self, so I've just been waiting. Yeah, so she dates. Um, She's Thunder's Thunder. girlfriend. Thunder. Outsiders, right? Yeah, and and same in the show. So I think that's why they brought her in. Oh, cool. So I'm excited to see. I've been waiting for her to be more Amazon like. So I'm hoping. Uh, Sweet Extra has said that there's a little bit of a change going on right now. So I'm gonna catch up on Black Lightning. It's the only it's the only C- DCCW show I'm watching, like as it comes out. You yeah, yeah, watch wait Super, the rest of Supergirl or. What's the other I one? Wait for League, League of... Legends of Tomorrow. Whatever. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Oh. I, I can't. I, well, I don't know. I, I can't. I couldn't do it. I could. I tried with uh, Arrow and Flash and. I, I don't know. like. I, I, could, I could get Arrow, but Flash is really Flash, good. And Legends yeah. of Tomorrow is. Well, the, my problem with the first Flash season is it's that, such a superhero show. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And I, I may go back to it. My problem with Flash is I feel like they utilized too much of the good stories from the comic books already and by the end of season one i'm like oh my god are they they're, all they have left is flashpoint and then, sure they enough did. Like, <laughs> they did that yeah they did it. i'm like eh. they did a lot of good stuff with everything though i mean there's some yeah. things that, you know people disagree on but overall like the I way watched, this team watched, has grown I together season of that and i watched three seasons of arrow and that was yeah that's i think that's where that's I pretty typical that. Right, yeah, a lot of people it. haven't. I haven't caught up. I haven't been actually been caught up with Arrow, but Kept Flash. Back in I on the Flash for elongated man. Ralph Dibney yes. is. He's, he's in awesome. He's everything I could have wanted. I already, awesome. even though I love elongated man. And when he first showed up, I was like, "This is not going to be good." And of course, by the end of the season, I was sobbing about him, about my love for Ralph Dibney. <laughs> Where did this come from? You <laughs> read like, you you League International because that's that's. What most people fell in love with him. No, he's, he's a wonderful so character. I, I, there was a some panels about Ralph Dibney about how Sue fell in love with him, that mm-hmm. were floating around. Um, I think Tumblr, and she talks about how she she's met. Or he talks about how you know Sue had met Superman, he'd, and she had seen that those blue eyes, and she had seen how broody, sexy Batman is, and she's met the Flash, and she's met all these big name superheroes, and yet she only has eyes. For Ralph, and it was very sweet. And I was like, "Oh, okay." And so I was oh, very man. touched, and we then should, got super into Elongated Man. We should totally read Identity Crisis. You would love that Please. story. Please, no, More. no, no. If you like oh, those characters, the one? no. Oh, I know that he dies, and there's the weird magic bullet, and they become ghost detectives. I hey, don't care. That's the story of Captain America lives, not Elongated Man. No, uh, Identity Crisis is one of my, one of those other books that i don't like talking about but the omni bros and i did a review of it and i yeah i could not i that's one of my most hated books of all time because well we should read it because you hate it well what's interesting is that people really love it like it is known 
because it's Brad Meltzer, who's a, you know an author, published author, mm -hmm. uh, coming and writing comic books, and he brings a lot of realism into it. While I appreciate that, I feel like he really destroyed a lot of the characters that I enjoyed, and that that was yeah. part of my problem. It's like you can't you can't just come in and pretend like you know some of these characters, do something horrible to these people, mm -hmm. and then have these heroes act like no no let's keep it let's keep the rape quiet and not tell okay, anything. Okay, here's what here's That's, what I want to hear. This is me. We're done. I want when Heroes in Crisis is done. I oh, want yeah. us to read Heroes in Crisis and Identity Crisis because. The what? way that you're talking about this right now is how I talk about Heroes in Crisis. So I would like to compare the two. Hmm. Because that's okay. how I feel. Yeah, the first two having, having, having your current working knowledge of DC characters right now in Rebirth going into Heroes in Crisis is the exact mm -hmm. same way you talk about that. So I would be very interested to see how and we how there's a lot of, reconcile and, that. And the thing is, there's a lot of writers that do that. Um, as much shit as I give Bendis, like, he actually cares about some of these characters, though. Like, um, he, I just don't like the way that he writes the characters. But he actually does care about them and should know most of their stuff. Like, Daredevil, I think his Daredevil is solid. I like the way that he writes that he writes Matt Murdock. It's just, it's really weird that that book is so loved in so many people's eyes. Uh, but yeah, me, I can't, like, I had to re rereading it was a, because I, every, I marked so many pages on my book, uh, mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, we have to talk about this ridiculous panel right here. Um, yeah, that was about a year ago when we reviewed it on Omnibros, because, uh, it was with Jess and Gabe. I was drinking that night, so I'm sure it was a long <laughs> episode. I'm sure it was. Um, All right, well, promise me that when Heroes in Crisis is out, we can do, like, a double, I think. I think it'd be really interesting. Okay. I'm down for yeah. it. What is my worst? Because Tom, Tom King kills everything I love. Well, oh, Tom, God. And people love Tom King. Like his Batman, his uh, well, Miracle that's Man. They don't care about the, the characters that he doesn't understand his, or care about. His vision? Well, yeah, that's called cannon fodder, though. That's what's going to happen, right? You have any writer that comes in. Let's say, hey, Stephen King's coming to write X Men, right? Oh, my God, people are flipping their shit. What the fuck's he going to do with Cannonball or Sunspot, right? But the people that love Sunspot are like, Sunspot wouldn't do that. Why did he get killed off? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. It's just the way editors work. Uh, here's a good question. I love this question. What is your worst pet peeve about yeah. comic books? I'm going to tell you my worst pet peeve as a collector. It's shit that's going on right now with Dark Horse and Boom Comics. Um, as a collector, I like to sit on books and be like, okay, I'll get that in a week or two. But these motherfucking things are selling out before the end of the day. I understand that Dark Horse has lost the rights to things like... Yeah, I had to buy Buffy today, and I'm so upset about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, King Cone, like, uh, Instock Trades sent us a notice saying, we don't have copies of King Conan coming in. Do not hit the F5 button all day long waiting for King Conan Omnibus, or Colossal. Because yeah. the PBS orders had to be filled with the orders to get it. Now they're saying they got... I think they're getting 54 copies sometime. Mighty Morphin motherfucking Power Rangers, Volume 2, the year two, the hardcover uh, by Boom Studios is out of print already. Mm -hmm. like, that, that is insane. It, it just, just came, came out. out. And I think a lot of it, though, unfortunately, is because people know how much Volume 1 is worth. Like, you two need to go on Amazon right now and type Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Year One hardcover and look at the third party prices and it will blow your fucking mind. And, and, and both of you will slap me and be like, Omar, why aren't you selling your copy? One, because yeah. <laughs> I'm not that right? guy. I've never been that guy. Um, yeah, it was hard to, because like, I ordered a couple of books today because I know that the, the volumes preceding those are already out of stock and very expensive. Like, I. I got Dragon Age, the Volume One uh, Library Edition. Um, okay, last that week. one's out of print, right? Out of print, very expensive, and so volume the, the Volume out. Two by Rucka just came out today, mm -hmm. and so I was like, originally I was going to wait till Friday to order that and Buffy, the the late, the last Library Edition for Buffy. And with you know those, switching those, to those things will also be like because this is it. they have one print run because they don't care they lost the rights. Yeah, right. So, so they're out. They're out. They're out. That's a shame. I can't wait till I didn't wait for till Black Friday because I was like, well, I'm gonna have to order these today just in case because I can't risk the chance. Yeah. Right, and it's I mean it's good for business and it's also bad because people go to these websites and even you know Amazon 
the most you're you're ever and you got a bitch a lot is you're gonna get a gift card. Hey, like, sorry, you've had this book pre-ordered for two months, but here's a five dollar gift card. Bullshit. I'm calling them back. Um, but yeah, I don't understand like the dark horse thing. I kind of get like Clark Nato said. I get that, right? Yeah. They lost yeah, the price. They printed. I don't know. Five hundred so copies. They're done. Or yeah. They're done. They don't care. But boom. Like surely somebody in the collected editions of the Boom Department with Irredeemable and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is keeping an eye online and like, hey, these books are going for like three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, yeah. So Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Year One Deluxe on Amazon. I haven't checked anywhere else. Is selling for three thousand two hundred and ten dollars. People pay that price. Fucking insane. They should message me. I should sell it. Um, yeah, you should probably sell it. You can and have was, a family there vacation. Was, there was a convention exclusive that's a slipcase with, um, damn it, I just read the series last year, uh, the the Shattered Grid bad guy, the Tommy bad guy from the series. Oh, yeah. So it's a slipcase. I saw it in Baltimore. I almost bought it for a friend of mine who's missing it because this book was like 75 bucks. But the damn thing was $200 because it was an exclusive. And now that's out of print. So mm-hmm. that's what irks me about like being a collected editions comic book collector yeah. is this is getting as ridiculous has single issues where the first fucking day these issues sell out like batman damned was gone yeah. because of the batawang the bat dick gone and those are selling for crazy prices because dc made an announcement saying we are not reprinting this book ever again bullshit they know they uh, they will print it whether it comes with a damn black bar i'm not even sure why i'm going that long but it wasn't that impressive <laughs> yeah. uh, or whether it comes with the un cut version of it what so, would an uncut version oh never mind yeah. well the, the dong right yeah just see it sorry yeah. <laughs> whatever you want to call it um so yeah that that's that's one of my biggest pet peeves i was going to make a video about that actually because that really aggravates me that there are fans out there that are not that are, they're starting to get into the hobby of collecting in collected editions and they're yeah. finding it a difficult time to find these books like there's no re okay dark horse and boom but then you got like marvel selling out of like uncanny x-force omnibus volume yeah. one yeah quit is the, like, yeah, right? should there be an excuse for that yeah that you figure i know they're expensive to print and it's not like i'm sure you know the markup on them i i honestly don't know i i'm just making up shit right now when i'm talking about markup because i really don't know because when they're liquidated these things go for about 15 to 20 bucks and then you find them at shop at, at comic book conventions for about thirty dollars to fifty dollars. Uh, that's when they're liquidated. I don't know what the markup is. So that's my man. That was a long uh, pet peeve. That is that's a good pet peeve though. <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Oh my God, Clark Nato, you motherfucker! <laughs> These questions are killing me tonight. How do I feel about the Grayson reprint? So is this a reprint of the Grayson Omnibus? Was that yes. it? No. So I, my, I think know, that everywhere. Like literally, my message was like, I, I remember somebody Brooks, my uh, our friend Brooks from the Omnibus Collectors Group, and Clark Nato saw my message. <laughs> That's why he he's writing these questions. Um, it was like DC reprints this book, and my I was like, yeah, thanks. DC print a, reprint a book that's still in print, but cancel Impulse Omnibus on me. Fuck, come on, what? It just How seems that like odd because I mean. Did that, that many people really like Grayson, the run? I don't understand. Like, Well, I don't understand the need for a reprint unless there's like a page missing or something that I didn't know about. But I never heard anybody, maybe nobody read their Grayson omnibuses that are just sitting <laughs> on their shelf and were all missing pages. And Probably these not. Doing favor and I'm here going the fuck off because they canceled my impulse. Um, but yeah, that that's how I feel about that. Uh Kyler, I don't know. I don't know if we can. It, they just, that's another thing. Of, oh my god, these questions I'm gonna sound like a little bitch. Um, the the scalp hardcovers, they're not a lot of them are out of print. I don't know if we'll get a reprint because they just canceled the soft cover trade paperbacks. So I think they got to like volume two or three and they canceled the run. That's it, there won't be any more, which really pisses me off. That's another thing about DC that pisses me off is you go and buy like one or two volumes supporting these books. Like you want to yeah. like Birds of Prey, like the Chuck Dixon run and the Gail Simone run. And you get stuck with like two or three volumes and you're like, God damn it. Where's the rest of the story? Come on. Like 
at least say what you will about Marvel, they tend to finish out their shit one way or another. And you, if you notice back here, this is the Incredible Hulk visionaries, Peter David, right? Mm -hmm. And then they started this epic line. Okay. Right? But this is a continuation. This epic, these ep three epics right here are a continuation of these stories here. At least they are finishing them in some way. Whereas DC is like, yeah, you know what? We'll cancel that line. Five years from now, we'll do another Birds of Prey Volume 1, and your dumbass will buy it, and you'll buy Volume 2, and then we'll cancel that. Because that's what they've done in the past. They've done that with Batgirl. They've done that with Robin, Nightwing. I can go on. I'm getting angry. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Somebody asked me a good question, like a happy question. What are y'all doing for Thanksgiving? I don't talk about that. What's everybody uh, doing for Thanksgiving? Do y'all even celebrate Thanksgiving? You have to work. I remember having to work many Thanksgivings. I don't off. I'm going to bake pie and then eat pie and then go Black Friday shopping. That's right. With you, Omar. And potentially, man, are you going to go with us? Well, I'll be in Pennsylvania, so oh, no. I'll be in there in spirit. I'll be watching <laughs> Wreck-It Ralph 2 with uh, Corey and my daughter because that's what I, how I plan to spend Thanksgiving with my parents after we eat because it's just me and my parents and my sister, my little sister, the middle you'll, one. You'll be with us at heart. Be with yeah. Us at heart. Yeah. Let us know if no. you're looking for anything, because there's 40% off hardcovers at one of our comic book shops. At, the one that carries omnibuses. Which one is so, that, A+. Plus? No, Comic Interlude. Comic, comic Interlude is the one that okay. carries um, hardcovers, usually. Okay. So, awesome. Um, I will tell you one of my favorite uh, stories before we go. Sure. Uh, this one cheers me up. I think Amanda knows this story. Maybe Do Maddie. I? I'm sure some of our listeners don't, unless you watch our my, the Near Condition panel show. On a regular basis. Uh, Black Friday at the work of Walmart, 1997. And uh, I was put in charge, Jesus Christ, I don't know why, of hiding the uh, Furbies. Do you all remember Furbies? Oh, yeah. I remember Furbies, yep. They were huge, right? They were the mm -hmm. Christmas item for 97. And I'm like, awesome, I'm going to go hide these in ridiculous places. I don't know if you all remember these years, but we used to hang bikes up in the ceiling of Walmart. I remember that. So I would take the scissor lift and I hit a couple up there. I would take one and put it in like the freezer aisle, like the French fries, like stuff like that. Places you wouldn't <laughs> look, right? I will never forget. I um, it was um, <laughs> there was this huge like everybody. We opened up the shop. Everybody came in, and within like ten minutes, there's this huge mob around the pillows where I was like, "Hey, that's where I hit one of the Furbies. Let's go see what happened." <laughs> wow. There are these two grown women that are fighting over this fucking fur. Like, so much fight. Like, she took her hand, the lady, the other lady's hand, and pulled back and broke her finger. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Wow, it was horrible. That's just. I was laughing my ass off. Now, like, I did that. <laughs> do their kids even have these Furbies still? I mean, let's well, be real. People fight over $3 like, houses. Black Friday is the I best know. and worst of humanity. That's why I just... we're going out every year. Oh, gosh. Was it spectator sport for you? I don't know. I just like watching people break. Yes, you do. <laughs> no. It's a hobby of mine. I can sit there and eat popcorn and watch these motherfuckers shop all day. But I'm also one of them. So I like, you know. It's 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 Black Friday. Like I said, it, it is literally the best and worst of humanity. Yeah, it truly That's is. The probably best way to describe it. I will be taking Lyndon to Candy Cane Lane so she can see all of her favorite chocolate bars in real life as an adult grown sized person with hands. And I hope that freaks her out and prepares her for the reality of adulthood. <laughs> Because Candy Cane Lane is at Hershey Park. So just imagine a bunch of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and Hershey chocolate bars walking around with white hand, gloved hands. And that's, I'll be excited to see if she likes that. I think she'll hate it. She's scared of Santa Claus. So be good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you go live your happy little world <laughs> while Maddie and I are in the dumps. Yes, I'm going to be doing, I'm just doing yeah. different consumerism. I'm yeah, doing, it's the hospitality and tourism industry. That's what I'm just putting my money towards this this Thanksgiving weekend. Maddie and I are going to be with the common folk because that's what we are. Common. common yeah. Folk. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that that's it. Thank you, everybody, for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you. Half the episode conversation about Guardian Devil. <laughs> <laughs> going off about what the fuck is wrong with the damn collective editions department at these places. Um, um, Maddie, you want to sign us off? 
Yeah, sure. So thank you guys again for tuning in and, you know, listening to us ramble about comic books. We really appreciate it. We love talking with you. Um, we'll see you again next week, same time, talking about Kingdom Come. Um, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're on any social medias, check us out at Near Mint Con. Um, thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Have yeah. a happy Thanksgiving. Bye, everybody.